Today on Q&A Mondays, we talk about paint lines, what they are and how they relate to sheet, coil, and your metal roof. In this episode, I take a trip to the Sheffield Metals Ackworth, Georgia branch to visit Tom Sutherland to discuss this important step of the metal roofing process. Welcome to another Q&A Mondays on the Metal Roofing Channel. I'm Thad Barnett from Sheffield Metals. Today we're talking about paint lines. As I mentioned before, I've got Tom Sutherland joining me. Thank you for being on today's episode. Um, there are quick links in the description. You can jump ahead to any of the questions we'll be talking about today. Um, so let's get right into it. Uh, Tom, tell me a little bit about what a paint line is and how it relates to metal coils and sheets. There are several paint lines all around the country uh, that do this particular product. Um, and they're all basically the same process. Uh, they all have cleaning stations and uh, drying stations and heating stations. Uh, the material that we use is a kinar specifically, but it applies for polyesters and siliconized polyesters also. All three of the products are baked on at the paint line. If you were to take this paint and try to paint something with it, the paint would never dry. Yeah. It's so that's opposed to like air dry paint. It's yeah. opposed to air dry. Yeah. So being baked on, that's why they can give the extended warranty and it uh, aids to the life of the panel. A paint line, it goes through uh, uh, several different stages to get through the line to get done. Uh, you start off and it'll go through a cleaning and it'll go through an acid bath or an acid wash in some cases, not all cases, and then it'll go through drying and then you put on a primer coat and a top coat. Not all paint lines are uh, double, double uh, headed. They don't have two, two stages where they can apply the, the primer coat and the top coat in the same run. Right. Most of the ones we deal with do. Uh, if you don't have that, then like on a Kynar that requires a primer, you'd have to run it through the line twice. Okay. Um, one, of the, one of the big things that I'm always asked is, you know, as far as small runs, uh, the thing about a paint line is that with Kynar, they run it a little bit slower, but you still got to run that thing at about 350 feet per, per minute. Okay. So uh, when you string it up, you know, the length of a football field, which is what you're working with on these paint lines, you've got to have a significant amount of metal to get it through the line. Yeah. So you can't do the small batches. Uh, typically, they can do, oh, maybe five or 6,000 pounds is, is the least that any paint line is going to want to mess with, unless they're a small paint line. And with that... Uh, when you start running that kind of quantity with the setups and the cleanups, it gets very expensive and very price prohibitive. So, right. Okay. Um, that's why you know everybody, everybody's got their own palette of colors, and if you go off of that palette, then it can get very pricey. Okay. Sure. So, if a property owner or maybe an architect wants to order a non-standard color, um, is that something that can happen with a paint line, or uh, how does that kind of work? Yes, you can. I mean, you can pretty much do any color that you can imagine or that you see. Uh, it can be it can be per, uh, mixed at the uh, paint company and shipped over, and they can apply it. What you run into is uh, minimum quantities on the uh, on the material. Uh, you have to have so much to run it through the paint line and string it up and. The, when they do small batches of paint, it's a whole lot more expensive. Okay. What is the cost kind of with the specialized colors there? Well, anytime you do a specialized color, it's going to be a whole lot more expensive. Okay. Uh, just from the sheer fact that they have to mix the paint. And when you mix a small batch of paint versus a big batch of paint, uh, you, you just got more time and 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 to make up for the small yeah, quantity. Yeah, it's spread out over this, more. Yeah, 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 I got you. And also, in, uh, you know, in, in your large batches or your standard colors, and 
Uh, typically, the paint lines will keep uh, drums of paint on the floor okay. for this. Where in like the whole process, you know, when, when Sheffield receives the material and it gets out to a contractor, where does a paint line fall in the whole process? Is it the second step or first step, or what's that process like? Well, first you've got to get you know the material in. So obviously, it comes in from a steel mill. We'll bring it in from the mills and say 40,000 pound coils and the paint line will take this 40,000 pound coils, mount them up and paint them. If it's all one color, uh, you can paint the whole coil at 40,000 pounds. We break them into smaller coils so that we can handle them here, bring them in here and then we slid them down to even smaller coils and ship them out to okay. the job. Okay, so can, can those 40,000 pound coils have more than one color applied to them? Yes. What they do in the process is that in a paint line you have um, what they call accumulator towers. So they can run a, um, a coil through or a strip through and then do a changeover. When they do a changeover they'll put in a, what they call a night strip and run it through the line and the accumulator towers keeps the line running. You gotta keep that material running through the line the whole time or it'll all burn up and okay. and you got a you got a crash line, yeah. you got a problem there. So but and then what they'll do is change out the uh, um, the rollers for the paint system for the paint and when they get all of that in place they bring the uh, accumulator towers back down, run the uh, stitch in the prime coil to the night strip and keep going. The most under, the misunderstood thing out there in the industry is that, you know, people go to a Home Depot or a Lowe's and get paint matched and stuff like that. That is not the same paint that is applied to uh, the coil that that's, comes off of a paint line. It's not baked on. Uh, it's not going to have the same uh, quality. It's not going to last as long. You're chalk and fade is going to be totally different yeah and you also got to make sure that the material is primed and and clean properly or the paint's not going to stick to yeah. it so it's um it's it's a lot more complicated than what people might think and a pa paint line is really a fascinating type thing to see i've probably seen 20 of them yeah. over over my years wow. so. Yeah, and I, I've talked to Mike Blake before about repainting a metal roof, and that's uh, that's a completely different type of paint, uh, totally different process than you know a baked on application. Absolutely. All right, Tom. Well, I think we uh, learned a lot about paint lines today. I appreciate you uh, taking the time to talk to us today. Um, comment below with any questions. Thanks for checking out today's episode. Make sure you subscribe to the Metal Roofing Channel uh, and uh, look forward to new videos. Thanks a lot. Mm -hmm.